In this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to create a view in Salesforce. I'll be going over how to create a new view, how to use filter criteria, how to change the filter logic, and how to change the columns of that view. Welcome to the channel, my name is Nick. Thank you ever so much for giving this video a watch. Hopefully it will be of value to you. Just before we get into the video, if you need any help at all with Salesforce, please check out my website below we would be delighted to help. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. In this video, like I just mentioned, I'm gonna be explaining how to create a list view inside of Salesforce that will allow you to filter the records to show you specific information that you want to see. Now, you can apply this to any area of the Salesforce system, leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities, whatever you like. In this particular instance or example, I'm gonna use the cases area. So I'm gonna head over to cases, and as you can see, there are loads and loads and loads of records, and I want to filter to just show me specific information. So what we firstly wanna go ahead and do is go to the cog on the far right hand side here and use the drop down menu. Now this is what's known as the list view controls. This allows us to create new views and edit the existing ones. What we wanna do is create a new view. So just press the new button. And firstly, we need to give our view a name. So call it whatever you are gonna be using it for. I'm just gonna call this the example view just for the sake of the video. So I've got the example view, the API name will automatically fill in. Do not worry too much about this. What we now need to do is select who can see this list view. So if you'd like to make it personal to just yourself, then you can select that or you can select it so all users will have access to this view. It's entirely up to you and what you intend on using this particular view for. Once you're happy, go ahead and press the save button. And as you can see, we've now created a new view. It will be, it will appear in the drop down menu as you see here. And if you use the pin button, you can pin it as your default view every time you come onto that particular object, in this case, cases. So now what we wanna do is, of course, we've created our new view. We want to go ahead and filter to just show us the specific information we want to see. It would be no point, there would be no point in just creating a, a new view uh, that shows us all the data like all cases would. So let's go ahead to the right hand side and you might find that this has already been selected. If not, what we wanna do is press this filter or funnel looking button. Press that and you will be presented with this filter here. Now this is where we can go ahead and create a load of filter options and we can create an and or basis. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment's time. Firstly, as you can see here, this is a default and this will always appear, filter by owner. If you click that, you can select all cases or my cases. In this instance, just because I wanna show more data, I'm gonna select all cases and press the done button and then press save. There we have it. That will show us a little bit more data as you can see here. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and add a few different sets of filter criteria to uh, remove the majority of the data here and just show the specific information that I want to see. What we need to do is go ahead and press the add filter button. And then we have a choice of all of the fields on the cases. Now, if you're on contacts, you'll see all of the contact fields. If you're on opportunities, you'll see all of the opportunities fields. Now, in this instance, I want to go ahead and create a filter by status. So I've searched status, press the enter button, and then we have an operator. And that is equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than. So in this instance, I want a status that is equal to, and then if I press that, we'll get a, a, a list of options that shows all of our status options. So in this particular instance, I want to select the new button. So if I press that and press the done, this will then go ahead and add this particular filter criteria to our filter options. We then just need to go ahead and press the save button. And now all of these, as you can see, have been filtered as new. So all we will see here is the records with the status option equal to new. You will notice that any other status option will not appear here. So that's our first piece of filter criteria. Now I wanna go a step further and go ahead and press add filter. Again, it's very simple, we can add another filter option. So in this instance, I wanna search case reason and then case reason is equal to, and then I get again a number of op options. So in this particular instance, I want to select new problem. So case reason is equal to, and then new problem. And then go ahead, press the done button and again, press the save button. 
Now, you will notice here, okay, that it is status equals to new and case reason equals new problem. Now, we may want to change that. And if you would like to change that, what we need to do is go to the add filter logic. What we can then do is change the and to or. So just highlight and and just type in in capital letters or. Then once you're happy, press the save button and this will then show you all of the status options that equal new or all of the case reasons that equal new problem, okay? So that is how we can go ahead and begin to filter and break down our data. Now let's go one step further. I'm just gonna change this back to and and then press the save button and that will just show us this one record here. What I then wanna do is add another filter criteria. Press the add button and then I want to add the type. So I've just searched type equals to, and then we've got problem, feature request, or question. Now, I'm gonna select problem and then go ahead and press the done button. And as you can see, there are absolutely no records that appear here. So status equals new and case reason equals new problem and type equals problem. If I then go back to my add filter logic, you will see one and two and three. What we can do now is go one and two or three. So that means status equals new and case reason equals new problem or type equals problem. In order to do that, what we must do is add brackets at the start and at the end of the two that you would like to or. Okay, so one and two, and then we just need to change the and to or. So one and two or three in brackets. And there we go, status equals new and case reason equals new problem or type equals problem. And there we have it. We've created some filter logic and we've filtered down all of the case records to show us the specific information that we need to see to manage our business and manage the cases inside of Salesforce. Super, super simple stuff. Hopefully the filters have made sense and the logic is really, really simple. Now you can go ahead and add an additional filter and you can just have and four. Now, obviously, I haven't got that in this particular instance. So it'd be one and two or three and four. Hopefully, this makes sense to you. It's really, really simple and it's ultra, ultra useful. Okay, so I'm just going to press the remove button, press the save button. And then, as you can see here, we can go back to our filter logic that has removed everything again. And now I want to go one and two or three and press save. So that is the logic I would like to keep for this view. We can then exit out of the filter button, just pressing the X button. And then every time a new case is created that matches the criteria that we set out, it will, sh it will be added to this list here. And like I've said, you can apply this to any area of your Salesforce system. Now, there are a few additional things that I wanna show you. What we can do again is go to the cog, go to new, so we can create another view if we'd like. We can clone this view and the filter criteria. We can rename it. We've got the sharing settings that we uh, dictated at the very start when we created the view. We can also edit the list filters, which is exactly what we've just done. We can also select fields to display. Now this is gonna be very useful for anyone that wants to customize the columns that we see here. If we press select fields to display, it's very, very simple case of just pressing this arrow to so selecting the record, uh, so, sorry, selecting the field, and then pressing the arrow and it will move across accordingly. So we can remove subjects and move that back, and then we can move over date slash time created. Now, once you're happy with that, we can then reposition the columns. So we can then go ahead and select the field that we wanna move, and then we can move it up or down. So if I then press the save button, you will see that escalated is at the very beginning of this view. And we can edit and change this accordingly to suit the needs for you. You can edit this as much as you like. Wonderful. Now, the final thing I wanna show you is the delete option. Go ahead and press delete and we can go ahead and delete this view like I have just done here. So hopefully that has explained how to create a view, how to use the filter logic, how to edit the view, and then how to delete it as well. Hopefully this video has been useful and I'll see you in a moment's time. Hopefully your new view is all set up, you've created the right columns, you've got the filter set up, and the filter logic is all sorted as well. If you have enjoyed the video or found it at all useful, please consider giving it a like, possibly even subscribing. If you have any further questions at all, please drop a comment below or you can email me as my details are in the description below. 
and I will do my absolute best to answer any questions you do have. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will hopefully see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.